Hello and welcome to the free Decision Point Trading Room. My name is Erin Swenlin, and I am here with my father, Carl Swenlin from DecisionPoint.com. We have a packed show for you today as usual. So today we're going to be going over our signal tables. Carl's going to run through the market and what's going on with that. He's going to spend special attention to the Magnificent Seven and a discussion about the AI bubble starting to deflate. So something to stay tuned for. I'll be going over sector rotation and then I'll take your symbol requests. So for your symbol requests, go ahead and put those in the Q&A box and please only put one per person so everybody gets a chance to have their symbols looked at. And then the chat room is for you. We have a moderator in there. Just make sure that when you send a chat message that you use the drop down menu to send it to everyone. Otherwise, just us, we will get them and we do not monitor the chat room. That's why we have a moderator. All right, that's all we have for our housekeeping. So I will pass it to you, Dad, to go ahead and look at those signal tables, which uh, are changing. Right. Um we picked up what I think about three. Uh, yeah, on Friday we picked up three going from buy to neutral, and I looked at after the close on Friday. I looked at the rest of the buy signals. There, there are twenty of them. Ten are configured in such a way that price is below the twenty and the fifty-day moving averages. So that's destined for crossover unless price gets back above one of those. So um, we should see more deterioration uh, this week in the signal table. Still, at this point, it doesn't look all that bad, but it is deteriorating. Um, the bias assessment, uh, basically, with, with the Silver Cross intermediate term bias, with the Silver Cross index, it was above its 10-day moving average it's a bullish bias. If it falls below the, the 10 day moving average, it's a bar bearish bias. So this is just, it's rather subtle. It's not flashing lights necessarily, but it's its subtle telling you things are shifting. Okay, so right now, um, still looks like about a th two thirds uh, in a bullish bias, um, depending on what we see today. With the market, it may get better or worse. Okay, let me go to my analysis charts. Okay, here's the S&P 500 ETF uh, SPY. Notice it was a huge bad week last last week. It's bounced up. It's up about a one percentage point. But notice that the price is still below the, the 20 and the 50 day moving average. So with with the ex exponential moving averages, it will always they will always follow price. So it's going to follow price down and ultimately cross over unless again we get a huge bounce up above those. Let me look at the Climax assessment. Last week, we got a we got an upside initiation climax on Monday. That was uh, oh, that was Friday. Is that Friday? Okay, yep. but that was we we had a rising trend, and then um, it it uh, we looked like uh, upside initiation, but it turns out no. And then uh, I'm looking at the wrong day here. Okay. Yeah, last week was four days, so it's confusing. Yeah, here we had, right here, we had a downside initiation climax followed in, uh, a day, two days later by an upside initiation climb, climax. Neither one of them worked out. Uh, and then following the upside, we got a downside. And boy, that was... That was uh, for sure. And uh, again, rounded off the week with uh, 
an, a really bad down day across the board. So um, right now, this is uh, not a good situation. We would expect right now today we're, we're, we have a bounce and there's going to possibly be a couple of days of churn, but we, we expect to see this follow through to the downside. Um, okay. Buy some participation. Silver Cross Index is a percentage of stocks in the SP 500 that are above, um, that have a the 20 EMA above the 50 EMA. It's an a intermediate term buy signal. That's a 72%. Golden Cross is the percentage with 50 above the 200, and that's a 76. So this is uh, not horribly overbought, but yeah, we could say that's overbought. Now, uh, we've got the stocks above the 20, 50, and 200. Here we have, for these two, okay, 57%. So the, the uh, right now, the Silver Cross Index is pointing down it's gonna it's most likely this is the target about 50 57 percent uh, uh buy signals that's quite a bit of deterioration and i think we should take this more seriously this time around because the mag seven which have been holding the market up are not doing so great now so uh, the the lower weighted stocks are going to have more influence on what's going on uh, with the golden cross index is at 76 and if stocks above the 200 it, or 69 almost 70 percent so there's not a lot of uh, down to side uh, deterioration indicated here uh, but if if the uh, this continues to deteriorate it'll it'll eventually walk wash over into the um, longer term and here are the, the our primary indicators. Okay, you notice the short term uh, Swinland trading oscillator for breadth and volume. Uh, they are halfway th through uh, the range, roughly. So we'd expect more downside travel for them. I mean, it's not guaranteed, but that's the normal uh, fluctuation upside and downside to just move from one part of the range to the other. Uh, ITBM, that's intermediate term, breadth momentum and volume momentum, and they are falling, and we would expect to see them dip below the uh, zero line uh, to some extent. So uh, that has more to go. They don't have to, but that's what we would look for at this point. Okay, let's look at the dollar index. Where it looks like we're getting a short-term um, bounce here. I'd like to look at longer-term um, charts. Uh, let's get out to the weekly. Okay, so we've got from uh, 2020, we've got a, a long... Uh, rising trend here, but basically we've got this uh, rising wedge. We could make a bigger one of drawing from this top, but it's a rising wedge. It broke down from the red, snapped back. Uh, we'll see it, uh, but it, I would expect PMOs falling and I would expect it to go lower. That would be good for gold. Gold is this is uh, near all-time highs right here. It's all of this. It's a narrow trading range, and it's pretty well sticking to it. So right now, I think it's going to do some duty in there, and I would expect it to go higher. The gold miners. Notice the participation is uh, still pretty good here. We've got... Uh, Silver Cross at 67, Golden Cross is at 89, and that's uh, really good. Um, 
very oversold in stocks below the 20, uh, 50. And it's not so not so much here in the t stocks below the 200, but over overbought, I'm sorry, oversold. And right now it looks like it's kind of due for a bounce. Here's uh, crude. I've been having a good couple of months for sure. Let's look out. Let me look at Okay, on the weekly chart, we see it's a very uh, long-term trading range, uh, narrowing down from this range to now this range. So uh, we would expect it, if it gets this low to start another bounce. Treasury bonds, they are, uh, they've been in a rising trend since uh, May. Let's, let's go out further. Here's the weekly. Yeah, this is this is why you want to look at longer term charts, at least to the, go to the weekly. But we've got uh, a reverse head and shoulders going here. It has broken through the confirmation line. I would expect, you know, uh, an upside target to be in this general area here. So bonds are looking good, which means that uh, yields are going to continue to deteriorate. Now, all this could change. What what it's a Wednesday this week, right? I think so. Yeah. So depending on what the Fed does, and we'll just have to see. Yeah, but whatever they do could have a a major effect on yields and bonds. Here's the yield array. This is th a three-year chart. And right now we're headed down into this area of support. Uh, it would, this is a good area for it to find support. And it might uh, happen depending on what the Fed does uh, this week. But again, I, so I'm, I'm expecting it to say above this, this line here. Bitcoin. Notice that draw a declining tops line across the uh, back here through here. That you notice, and then this uh, top there failed to make it all the way to that line. And again, here we have another attempt, and it's way below the uh, declining tops line here, as we established an even steeper declining tops line. Finding support in here. Let's look at the weekly chart okay we're still looking at a flag formation and uh, basically I would expect you know about a 70 percent chance that it's going to break out of that and go higher okay here we are at the mag 7 neighborhood okay Apple is Notice we've got a top beneath the top, and we've got to go below this low to really establish a an intermediate term falling trend. But right now, not having a, a grand day, uh, down about a half a percent. And uh, let's look at the the weekly chart. Okay, we've got a rising wedge formation. Should have come down out of that, uh, went up instead. So. That's bullish, and uh, for now, I would look for it to maintain above this line. Uh, if it gets back below, uh, start looking for it to eventually break down out of that uh, wedge formation. With the deflation of the AI um, trade, I mean, this is still looks pretty good as far as that breakout goes, but I'm seeing a double top um in the shorter term so i mean the ai trade may be un unraveling here and i think that's really um obvious from some of these charts they're introducing the iphone 16 this week and so that again might have a lot to do with what happens here this breakout here may be in anticipation of that happening but it's still 
a, uh, breaking out on smoke and mirrors at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing, the thing with the uh, AI bubble is that expectations have been uh, irrationally positive about this, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, now I think people are stepping back and let's face it, even the, even the best performing stocks have to take a breather once in a while. And uh, that's, that's what's hitting the, uh, the mag seven stocks. Amazon had a declining top broke out and it's been in a sideways motion here. Um, this not this is not looking fantastic at this point. We have the PMO, the daily PMO is rising, uh, but it's kind of wiggly there. This, the stock basically is not rise. The PMO is not rising on strength. It's rising on the the price taking a rest and moving sideways. So if that keeps up, it'll be back at the zero line and start moving uh, to the right on the zero line. Amazon, um, I'm all ready to the weekly, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just need to reorient myself here. Okay, Amazon. Okay, the weekly chart have a rising trend line. It broke above this long-term resistance and it fell back below. This rising trend line is holding. Uh, but right now it's kind of in this indecision. Uh, PMO configuration, we've got a negative divergence and it's falling below the signal line. Uh, not, a, not a very positive move, not, not necessarily, I don't see a good buy point right now. Google really doing poorly, uh, has established, we have a top beneath the top and a bottom beneath the bottom. And uh, down a point and a half, uh, yeah, point and a half today, percentage point. And uh, they've got the uh, the uh, legal case. Mm -hmm. I can't think of the net with the word, but anyway, antitrust. Yeah. Yes. Notice that we've got it. The PMO is falling uh, below the zero line. It's crossed down below the signal line. So this is in. There's this is uh, looking bad. Here's the weekly chart, long-term rising trend. It's broken down from that. And again, we've got the uh, PMO falling below the signal line. So definitely not any buy, no buy uh, configuration here. Meta platforms, we've been talking about this trading range for months and uh, it continues in that trading range. Let's look at the weekly chart, not encouraging. We've got a negative divergence on the weekly PMO, and we've got the rising wedge formation, which we normally expect will break down. So another uh, bubble deflating. Microsoft, top beneath the top, but we still need to get below this to establish the intermediate term uh, falling trend. Um, PMO is below the zero line and falling and it has crossed down through the signal line. So this is in a negative configuration at this point. Weekly. Yep, here we go. We've got a rising wedge and it's broken down from that. Step back to the line and, it's come, and now it's pulling back away. Uh, negative divergence on PMO weekly PMO tops, and again, falling below the signal line. Not in a good situation right here. Finally, NVIDIA. Again, we've got, um, today it's up. Okay, it's doing nicely today. But you notice that the 20 has crossed down through the 50, so we're on a neutral signal uh, for NVIDIA. And, uh, in a, it's in a falling trend at this point. We've got top beneath top, but we need to get a bottom below this bottom here. 
it's it's a down about 25 percent or at this point and earlier it got down to almost 36 percent uh, from the all-time high and this is here's the again you look at the longer term chart you see the parabolic advance and uh and it broke down from that parabolic and you expect it to go uh, to the side or go back down and catch support at some of these lower levels. So I, I, I don't, you know, I don't know how far down it's going to go. It could do a consolidation, uh, a high level consolidation up here, but still, this is quite a range. This is about a 35% range. Uh, if it's if it consolidates in that range, so it'll be a a, a a bumpy ride. Currently, we've got the PMO is below its signal line and falling. It's very high, but you know it, this this PMO would rank it right up there against other stocks. But uh, it's falling, and I it, right now this this is not a pretty picture. Finally, t Tesla. Um, doing really great last week until Friday, and it and it crashed about five percent, I think it was. Okay, we're it looks like we're kind of getting into a trading range here. Hard to make it out. Uh, basically, it's not making progress. That's what the PMO tells us. It's, it's slightly above the zero line, so yeah, it's making a little progress, but PMO is moving sideways and not very impressive. You're looking at the long term chart. The, the weekly with this this uh declining tops line seems to be influenced uh, influencing price movement now but it's it's hanging around that um uh, uh we, we would uh look for it to um it looks like it's starting to move sideways if i if we start ignoring this declining tops line so that is the end of that. Um, I had a, a question. I, oh, I read an article uh, last week, whether it's a good time to get back into Intel. Intel used to be the NVIDIA of its day, not anywhere near as big in terms of uh, market cap, but uh, still it was, it was a high flyer for many years and it's doing very poorly right now it's got a in a daily uh, chart we've got it in a, a trading range and so we see the the uh, pmo is moving higher but it's below the zero line and basically all this is telling us is that there's that it the downside pressure has abated so if it continues this way the pmo will get back up to the zero line and start moving uh, um, to the right at the zero line. Um, okay, now let's move up and look at the weekly. Again, we've got uh, long-term support here. It's broken down below that. And this is this would call a reverse flag formation. There's no, no uh, sign of needing to buy this stock at this on the weekly chart. And the monthly chart, looks also looks horrible it's down 70 percent from its all-time high mm. which was yeah which just, wasn't that long ago no it's like uh 20 2020 2021 yeah uh, yeah so it's it's gone as i said how the mighty have fallen uh right now it's below the uh it's below this uh long-term support line Here's another long-term support. Uh, it could fall into this area and start moving sideways. But that's quite a, it's still quite a large range. It's about a 50% range. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, this is a horrible looking chart. There's no, there's nothing that looks great on here at this time. Um, considering the business that they're in, this could turn around pretty quickly, but I, I don't see tipping the toes in at this point. That, that's certainly not anything I would want to do. But just 
just uh, again, I don't know, you know, how many people like to use the monthly and weekly charts, but I love them because they really give a, a broad context of what's going on where the stock has been over a long period of time. Okay, did I miss anything? I don't think you did. Um, okay. No. <laughs> the ones you always miss, um, you did, so. Oh, All this. right. I guess it's my turn. It is. All right, let's do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about sector rotation. Let's go ahead and share my screen here. All right. So let me update this so that we can get the most recent picture. These are all 11 sectors on one page. Uh, I've got the PMO relative or the scooter, the stock charts technical rank. And then of course the price chart with the 20, 50 and 200 day EMAs. The one thing that I noticed right out of the gate on Friday when I was looking at this same candle glance is that there's only one sector with the PMO rising right now, and that is consumer staples. And it continues to look very good. Um, we're getting a lot of action in this area. It's a defensive sector, so it's not too surprising. And when we look at the other sectors as far as price movement goes, you know, real estate is the other one that looks great, that's held its rising trend with very little um, bouncing going on on the way up. And utilities also rising trend, very little um, problems as it makes its way higher. These two, the PMOs are topping, but really when you look at price, price still looks very healthy on these defensive sectors. So I don't think we're out of the woods. We're getting a nice rally today, but clearly a lot of this is centered around these defensive sectors. Um, today we do have energy up quite a bit though, um, coming in off of this very strong support level right here, probably worthwhile to look under the hood at energy. Um, materials on the decline, industrials seeing a decline, they're doing well today, but um, certainly price action doesn't look healthy. Um, speaking of health, um, the healthcare sector is also seeing a decline. This is also considered a defensive area, but it is not holding up as well as I'd like to see it holding up. It's below its 20 day EMA and that PMO is on a new cell signal. So not a good look. Technology, comm services, consumer discretionary, clearly in declining trends and the PMO looking very ugly for comm services and technology. Right now, consumer discretionary has held up somewhat moving sideways rather than moving down like technology and comm services. And this has caused the PMO to start topping. But price hasn't completely broken down in consumer discretionary, which is interesting given it is what we would consider an aggressive group. All right, let's go look under the hood at some of these charts. First, we'll start off with consumer staples. And there we are. So this is our under the hood chart. We have these under the hood charts for all of the major indexes right here. We have them for all of the sectors. And then we also have um, six industry groups that we also have the silver and golden cross for those under the hood charts. All of these charts are available to our members on our website in our chart list area. I will show you how to get there. So members can go over to our blogs and links page. And here are the chart lists where you can actually get those under the hood charts. And let me sign into my website here. So there's your under the hood for the SPY, under the hood for the mid caps, 
et cetera. So you can get to those. They are updated at the end of the market day. The data usually comes in and we have these updated around 3 p.m. Um, Pacific time. But let's go back to the under the hood chart. Okay. Um, one problem is we do have an RSI that is overbought for consumer staples. So it is kind of due for a little bit of a pause, if nothing else, just to get um, price out of overbought territory. But everything looks very strong under the surface. And I would say not what I would call too strong or too overbought. Um, we're getting overbought on percent stocks above their 20-day EMA, but still there is room for improvement. They're only at 81%. Look at the Silver Cross Index moving up very strongly at a nice healthy 76%, and the Golden Cross Index also on its way up for consumer staples. Notice sto stochastics are staying above 80. All of this is telling us that consumer staples are very healthy and we should expect more upside out of them. In particular, if the market is gonna to continue to display weakness, that could pose a problem for the rest of the market, but consumer staples seems to be the area that people wanna hide out. Energy, I told you we'd look at the energy under the hood chart. Like I said, we're hitting some very important support down here. This would be a great place to see a reversal, but the crude oil trade is still looking pretty ugly. Um, it's also in an area where we would expect to see a, a turnaround, but so far we're not getting that. So it would be, I think, a little bit early to be jumping into the energy sector with crude oil still looking, um, looking like it has a bearish bias. As far as the energy sector goes, it does have a bearish bias in the intermediate term because the Silver Cross Index is below its moving average, its 10-day moving average um, EMA. And so that gives us a bearish bias in the intermediate term on energy. So I think it's a little early to be jumping into energy right now for a a new uh, upside reversal. But I can also see if you wanted to take that risk, this is the place to take the risk um, if you want to get in early um, with a possible reversal coming in off of this area of support. But I'd be careful with that trade at this point until the um, crude oil trade starts to look a little bit more healthy. Consumer discretionary was the other one I wanted to look at under the hood. Like I said, price has been mostly consolidating sideways. It hasn't lost the 50-day EMA as support yet, still holding it. The PMO looks like it is turning up here, possibly. Uh, it's hard to say. I'd have to do a, a check on it. But if we do see it turn up, that would be very interesting and would give us the indication that we would look for an upside breakout. Um, but right now, the PMO is still curling over. So I wouldn't get too excited about um, a reversal in consumer discretionary. And look at the participation numbers. Um, they're starting to bleed off. We're getting declining trends on participation. We have a topping Silver Cross Index. So I, 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 this doesn't look like it's set up for a nice strong reversal. Okay, let's go ahead and we have about 25 minutes left. It is a trading room. So let's go ahead and see if we have any questions. And right. I've got one here from Mike. Uh, energy demand is forecast to be off the charts given the energy consumption brought about by surging AI server uses. Is this a good time to start looking for nuclear power related stocks? Um, yeah, you know, I wonder if there's an ETF for nuclear power. Probably uh, not. There but. is, actually. I, I've seen it before. Um, okay. We should get that on our ETF list for sure. Yeah, Uranium and Nuclear Energy ETF. NLR. So there's the daily chart of the... Um, 
uranium nuclear energy ETF. So it is, um, you know, got materials in here as well, I would guess. Um, we're at, it's like the energy chart. We're at some really interesting support here where we should see a possible upside reversal, but look at how negative the PMO is. It topped below the zero line. It's still headed lower. Stochastics are below 20. So I'd have to say short term, while it does look like it's at a place where we could see a reversal, um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this. Let's look at the weekly and the monthly charts though. I think that'll be more telling. Yeah, so we have the rising trend, but it's been broken and it is heading lower. Um, weekly PMO is in decline. The stock charts technical rank is about as low as it can go. I think it's a little early to start looking at this. And as we were saying, I mean, there's still some deflation going on with that AI bubble. It'll be interesting to see how this would be more of a, a trade on the implementation of AI. So that would be an interesting trade. I think it's a little early though, based on the weekly chart. And if we go to a monthly, yeah, it had the big rising trend. It's lost the rising trend. The monthly PMO has topped. I think it's a little early to start looking at that trade. What about the uranium? Similar chart. Yeah, it is really. A, yeah. yeah. Uranium's part of that um, ETF. So it looks like it does track a little bit more closely to uranium than anything else. Um, weekly very similar. We have the rising trend, rounded top, um, broken rising trend. The level of support, this is a, the last level of support right here, and it is holding above that level. This is a place to start looking for that upside reversal, but I do notice that that weekly PMO has dropped below the zero line. Um, which is not a good sign. And the stock charts technical rank is really bad at only 1.3. So while this looks like a possible area for upside reversal, um, it is a, a risky play, I would say. We Any other a, questions? Yeah, we have a question from Stephanie. When, when, how soon is this uh, uh, video posted to YouTube? Um, she missed the first part. Yeah, no problem. Um, we basically get it up as soon as the video is released to us from Zoom. And so generally uh, the, video, the, video, the video goes up um, right around 11 a.m., um, 11, 11, 11, 11.30, 11.30 um, Pacific time is when you can look for it. I'd recommend um, subscribing to our YouTube channel at um, DP Alert. Um, that's the name of our channel is at DP Alert. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to that and you should be notified when we post those new videos, but that's where you're gonna go to find them um, right around 11, 1130 Pacific. Um. Can we get individual stocks from your ch sector chart? Um, I know that's available on stock charts, but I, I haven't been able to figure out how to get it. Yeah, you can get the all the stocks that are within a sector on their website. I haven't um, also I haven't looked at it. Um, so mm, you're there is a way to scan to get those stocks that are in a particular sector. Um, but no, unfortunately, the under the hood charts, there's no um, link or anything that will get you to the uh, stocks that are within that particular sector or industry group. Are the blue dotted lines on your charts drawn by you or by auto function of stock charts? Now, now I, I draw them on... It starts the charts we look at here uh, for most of them. 
So those uh, those are done by me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be it for the questions. All uh, right. Start out with CNH long. Okay. All right. So this is the charts that I'm going to be using here for our trading room. I have um, the RSI on the top. Uh, above 50% here is considered positive territory. Um, PMO, the OBV for some volume patterns, if we have any, the stochastics, and then I do relative strength for that particular stock. I look at the industry group versus the S&P. So is it in a strong industry group? And then I look to see how it's doing against the SPY. And then I look how the stock is doing against the industry group itself. Am I finding a stock that is a leader within the group? And in this case, we do have a stock that's a leader or becoming a leader within the group because that relative strength line is rising. All right, I really like this uh, gap up move. We do have to consider that the stock is still in kind of a bear market configuration because the 50 day EMA is below the 200 day EMA, which is a bit of a problem. But we do see that 20 day EMA coming up toward the 50 day EMA for a silver cross. So things are turning around for this stock, um, which is a nice look. Um, double bottom. I like this. Hmm? Double bottom. Double bottom on here. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the setup here. I think it looks good. The one thing you're going to have to keep an eye on is this area of overhead resistance matches up with these tops, these lows, this low, these tops, gap support. This is a really strong area of overhead resistance, and that might be a bit of a problem for this stock. So you're maybe a, you think you're in a, you know, you've got, um, we've got a nice gap up move. Um, but it does look like it might um, pull back at that area or at least slow down the rally just because that is such a strong area of overhead resistance. But other than that, the chart looks pretty healthy. Stochastics turning up above 50. I, I like that. Let's look at a weekly. And there you can see that double bottom. It's coming off a very strong level of support right here at these low, this low, kind of those lows, these tops. So it's a very strong area of support that it is rallying off of, which I like. We have a new weekly PMO crossover buy signal. It just has to fight through this declining trend that it has been in. So like I said, there's still somewhat of a bearish bias going on on the chart, but we could be setting up a double bottom here on price here on the weekly chart too. Since this does look pretty good, let's look at a five minute candlestick chart. This is where I determine my entries and my exits for trading. We're looking for a positive PMO crossover with a positive RSI. That is your conservative buy point. You can also go on a PMO turning up like we're seeing here with the positive RSI, you could go in just on the positive RSI. It's really up to you how conservative you wanna be about your buy points. But this looks pretty good. We have the PMO turning up. Price is already on a rising trend. Um, looks like this is gonna be a pretty good buy point for you right now. Okay, we got about 15 minutes to go IBM. Uh, let's move on through quickly, IBM. <laughs> Okay, rising trend, um, broken out. Um, PMO is flat above the signal line. That tells us we have pure strength in this rising trend. Um, RSI is not yet overbought. Stochastic's kind of falling a little bit. Um, but overall, I like the look of this IBM chart. It, it has to go through the problem that it is in technology, which is really under pressure right now, but it doesn't seem to be bothering IBM too much. I like the look of this chart. Weekly, breakout, rising trend, PMO on the crossover buy signal. I have to say IBM is set up pretty nicely for a rally continuation right now. And 
if you wanted to get in. Looks like we're not at a buy point because the PMO is turning over and should give us a crossover sell signal here soon, which means we'll probably get a better buy point later in the day. SMCI. Ah, yes. Super micro. This has really been struggling in a, a really bad way. Um, I know we're probably looking here for some support. This is the area of support that we've got, which is well, looks like right about where we're at. Could go down just a little in this kind of a support zone. So this does look like a good place for an upside reversal. But the PMO is still in decline and stochastics are below 20. So this is a high risk play to go in for a reversal. It's still in a declining trend. So you've got a, you can see back here, we had a positive day, but that didn't, we didn't get a reversal there, nor did we get one there. So I don't know that we're going to get the reversal here, but it's certainly set up at the right level um, to get that upside reversal. But I, I'm i not thrilled with relative strength here. Um, I don't think I'd be interested at this point. I know it's a big rally today, but um, I think you're taking a lot of chance here on a reversal. One day of rally does not... Uh, really take us out of that bearish look of the last week, I don't think. Uh, C-O-I-N. Okay, coin. Another popular one. All right, so Coinbase in a declining trend. Um, it dropped below this level of support here, which is not a good sign. Um, the next level of support is down here at these lows. So it's got quite a bit of downside um, risk here. That's about a 26, 27% decline just to go that far, which is, wow. Um, I don't know that I'd want to take a chance. And, you know, we looked at the Bitcoin chart. It's looking kind of bearish at the moment. Um, we have a top below a top a bottom beneath a bottom. So we're in a declining trend channel here um, or in a declining trend. I don't like the look here of Coinbase. I think you're taking a big, big risk. And if we look at it on the weekly chart, the rising trend has been broken. Weekly PMO is in decline. I don't think I'd want to be involved with Coinbase right now. APP. APP. Uh, rounded top PMO getting ready to give us a sell signal. Um, stochastics are in negative territory. Um, I, I don't like the look of this chart. I really don't like that rounded top here. It dropped beneath this level of um, it had broken out from this prior resistance level, but it's now back below it. Um, holding onto the 50-day EMA, which is good, but I don't like the look of that PMO. It tells me that with that and the rounded top that we should expect some more um, decline here. And the weekly, it isn't a rising trend. Weekly PMO though is in decline. It doesn't look that bad on the weekly chart, I have to say, but I'm really not a fan of the daily chart right now. EWJ. EWJ. The Japan ETF um, double top developing here. PMO getting ready to give us a crossover sell signal. Um, stochastics in negative territory. The technicals don't look good on this chart and do suggest we're going to get some more downside. Um, I mean, this has been an area of reversal here at the 200-day EMA. Didn't hold it last time, though. And like I said, that's a pretty big double top that is um, coming, to, coming together right there, which would leave me a little less excited about this um, reversal that we're getting today. And the weekly, yeah, it's really stuck under overhead resistance. Um, 
PMO is topping for a second time beneath the signal line. Um, I, I just, I'm not a fan of the chart. FCX. SC, FCX. I see Microsoft up there, but um, we did look at Microsoft. That didn't look very good, if I recall. All uh, right, Freeport McMoran, FCX, um, hitting support, which is good, but we have a PMO top beneath the zero line and a crossover sell signal beneath the zero line. Just looking at the PMO, I would not expect this level of support to hold. I really wouldn't. And looking across here, it does line up with this top, but really these bottoms are more likely a, a stronger support level that would put price down quite a bit from there. And that's what I'd be looking for. I, I don't like the look of this chart. Weekly, kind of in a trading range. Do have a rising trend that it is holding right now, but weekly PMO on a sell signal and headed lower. I think this rising trend is quite vulnerable. RYTM. Thank you for asking about how I'm feeling, Fred. I'm feeling better. My voice is still a little weird, but um, definitely rested up this weekend. That helped quite a bit. Thanks for asking. Um, let's see here. Rising trend um, above the 20 and 50 day EMAs. PMO is on a new buy signal. We've got stochastics coming in above 80, and you can see some really good relative strength here. This one's set up pretty well for a, a at least a test of this area of overhead resistance. That is about 8.5% away, 8.3% away before it's going to run into some trouble. Um, that's a pretty nice little um, upside target, I think, for this one. Let's look at the weekly chart. And it's in a nice rising trend. Um, that area is, that overhead resistance could pose a problem because that's going to move it, I think, to new all-time highs. Let me just check that real quickly. Yeah, that'll move it to new all-time highs. So it might be a little bit of a sticking point. Um, but weekly PMO flat above the zero line for now, um, which is indicative of this rising trend that we have currently. I think it looks pretty good. Okay. Is it too late to enter long on Palantir? Hmm. Well, let's look. Oh, wow. Look at that move. That's why you're asking. I can tell. Um, I'm not sure what that uh, gap up move is about, but it certainly does look like it's going to get some follow through with that breakout on the move. Um, is it too late? Mm, maybe a little. I think there's going to be some more follow through to the upside just based on how strong this move is, um, unless it's some kind of a bull trap. Let's look at the weekly. Really nice rising trend on the weekly chart. Um, getting ready to hit the top of this trend channel, but weekly PMO on the rise. I don't know that it's too late. I just think that you you have given up, um, you know, 13% gain. So your upside potential is certainly limited compared to what it was if you had gotten in earlier today. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know that it's too late. I think you're just not going to see quite the um, upside movement that we saw today. I think it's going to start slowing its move down. Um, to the upside, but it certainly looks like you're going to get follow through. Okay. Uh, someone commented here that the Fed meeting is next week. Ah, uh, okay. 18th. Okay. Um, Palantir, by the way, it looks, it's getting a very vertical there. So I'd watch out for it. Yeah. You could see back in earlier this year with that really strong up move and how it had to you know, I had to then digest it. 
going back down about halfway. Right. So that that's what my observation would be. Yeah. Okay. Um, Disney for a long term hold. Okay. Well, if we're talking long term holds, probably don't want to look at a daily chart. We do want to look at those weekly and monthly charts. So I'm going to just move right on over into those charts. What do you think? Good idea. All right. Um, certainly near some um, support here, but how far down could it go before it hits that support? It's still vulnerable to about a 12% decline. Um, so, and I did just peek briefly at that daily chart and it didn't look very bullish to me. I think there's some more downside to absorb here for Disney. That's um, what the monthly looks like. Yeah. Uh oh, yeah. So, major support there, but if the, you know, if it drops below that level, I mean, it's some, a semi rounded top there. So, it's, and they're doing their very best to <laughs> drive customers away. Yeah, to drive them away, that's for sure. Um, got some woke issues there. Uh, let's see. I I think you're going to be due for some more decline. And I personally, if I wanted to get involved, I, I think you can wait this one out. You really need to see how far down is it going to go from here because it doesn't look like it's set up for an upside reversal. And look at that PMO. The monthly PMO is topped beneath the zero line and is headed lower. It totally is telling me that it, it probably won't even hold this level of support. So I don't know that I'd want to be getting involved even on the long side, you know, in the intermediate to long term. Um, I think it's too early. Okay, hey, I... So uh, someone pointed out that I missed silver. <laughs> All right. And here is our silver chart. Um, kind of, you know, moving in a sideways trading range right now. Um, PMO, though, on a sell signal moving lower. It does look like there's some downside pressure. We're going to see some more decline in silver. Um Correlation with gold is still pretty tight. Um, gold looks like it's going to be in a holding pattern. So silver, I would say, is probably in for some more consolidation, maybe along the top of um, this 200-day EMA. But I don't see an upside reversal really setting up yet. MP. Okay. And then I'm going to look at Microsoft just briefly since we had another question on it. Um, I mean, everything looks pretty good on the chart. It's in a nice little rally, um, RSI positive, PMO moving upward. We've got stochastics. Um, they're not above 80, but they're oscillating very close to it. And we do have relative strength improving on this one. So I would say it looks pretty good. The only problem you have is that rally is a little stale. Um, it's been at it for quite a while, and it could be due for another pause or a possible pullback from here. But ultimately, I think that the technicals are lined up pretty well for a continuation. And on the weekly chart, ooh, not a good weekly chart. We're in a big, long declining trend here that's not been broken. Price is below that 43-week EMA. You're counting on a big reversal here. And while this could be a good spot and we could end up with a nice long-term up uptrend because that weekly PMO is on a crossover buy signal, but we've seen that fail before. So I would be careful with this one based on that weekly chart. Now I'm going to look at Microsoft. Somebody mentioned a head and shoulders top. Yeah, I could see a head and shoulders top here. Let's look at it on the weekly chart, though. Yeah, I think you could make a case for it. There's your neckline. There's a left shoulder head. What could be a right shoulder that developed over here? 
Um, that's a really bad look. Uh, I pointed out the head and shoulders on semiconductors this weekend, and this looks like a head and shoulders building on Microsoft. That's, a, I think, a good um, observation. Okay, that, we're out of time. That wraps it up. All right, everybody, thank you for joining us in the free Decision Point Trading Room. We do run a special constantly if you want to try out any of our products for two weeks for free. Just use the coupon code DP Trial and the number two, DP Trial 2. That will get you two free weeks of any of our reports to try them out. We have our new scan alert service. You might want to check that one out. It's only $29 a month, but try it out for those free two weeks. See what you think. That's all we have. We will wish you good luck and good trading. <laughs>